Hello, and welcome back to another week of Myths versus Facts. This week I will be discussing Thomas Jefferson because he's such a prominent figure in American history and quoted quite widely today and justifiably so. Jefferson was really three different men. In other words, he went through three different phases of his life and political leanings. They were, one, the man of the revolution and declaration of independence. Two, as the roué of our French ambassador and member of Washington's cabinet. And finally, the final stage was the third president of the United States and his retirement. Now, what I'm going about to say will shock some people, but stay with me. It will iron itself out. Don't get in a big tether. This is history that has been purged out of American history uh, since uh, the Civil War. To say that Jefferson was a traitor would be an understatement. On more than one occasion, Jefferson worked to destroy the Washington government from within, the cabinet that he was part of, and later as a private citizen, attempting with members of the conspiracy to separate Western territory away from the United States. Now, this may sound outrageous to some, but all of this is available online and amply detailed and documented in my book. Much of this history was eliminated from the history books, like I said, after the Civil War, including the Jacobin French influence and Jefferson's role in cooperating with the French. Jefferson wasn't revealed as a traitor until he wrote a letter to a man named Philip Mazai in France. This letter was published in the Paris Monitor, which exposed Jefferson as an enemy of Washington at a time when he was playing both sides from within the Washington cabinet. This is why there is no question that Jefferson worked to bring down the Washington government from within. <laughs> we talk about leakers today in the federal government. Jefferson was the first leaker in the federal government that so many are concerned about today. This leaked information was passed on to the opposition newspaper he secretly helped establish, called the National Gazette, and other Democratic organs to help create ill feelings against Washington, such as the New York Argus, the Richmond Examiner, and the Boston Independent Chronicle. The primary Jacobin agent coordinating all of this was a man who worked for Jefferson that once exposed, Jefferson would not fire. In other words, there were Jacobin agents inside the Washington administration being protected by Jefferson. There are other things that are even worse that you will find in my book, but they take a great deal more to explain than the short time we have here. I know this information is a problem for patriotic Americans. It was for me, as I dug up more and more history I had never heard of before. History that used to be published, but gradually disappeared over the years as Jefferson was elevated and Washington diminished in histories written after the Civil War. In France, it was not unusual for Jefferson to entertain members of the Illuminati in his home, as a couple of examples, Marabou and Lafayette. Jefferson attended meetings of the Illuminated Lodge of the Nine Sisters. Whether he was a member or not is not known. As I mentioned before, the Gestapo confiscated the records of this lodge during World War II. This is something that may never be known unless someone uncovers the records that, are that were either presumably destroyed by the Nazis or they still have them. If the Nazis had not seized the records of the French secret societies, many questions could be answered. Having these records disappeared, has concealed the origins of the radical movements that evolved into the Nazi as well as the communist movements. In addition, great pains seem to have been made over the decades to hide the movement of the, of the Illuminati into the United States more than any other country and who these people were. We know that Jefferson read the key Illuminati Nicholas Bonneville's book, The Spirit of Religion, that not only promoted a universal brotherhood of man, but contained the idea of a civic religion based on the worship of reason rather than a supreme being. The spirit of religion by Nicholas Bonneville, first of all, 
promoted a universal brotherhood of man, and secondly, promoted a civic religion based on religion, uh, reason, excuse me, as I said, not a superior being, God in other words. Jefferson's largest block against him politically was the American clergy, and there were many early historians who wrote about the personal failings of Jefferson. As a result, or an example of the clergy being uh, against Jefferson, Reverend Timothy Dwight, president of Yale College and a foe of the Illuminati, when speaking of the possible election of Jefferson stated this, the Bible would be cast into a bonfire, our holy worship changed into a dance of Jacobin Pharisee, our wives and daughters dishonored, and our sons converted into disciples of Voltaire and the dragoons of Marriott. Now this came from the book Six Frigates, the Epic History of the Founding of the U.S. Navy. This extreme opinion was a result of the Jacobin agitation and immorality advocated and exhibited by their adherents in the minds of the religious leaders at the time. They feared for the future of the country with certain men in authority who cooperated with Jacobins, including Jefferson at the time. Now, before we go any further, we need to reiterate that Jefferson finally reverted to his old self, that he was prior going to France once he was elected president. Jefferson wasn't the only traitor or leaker in the Washington cabinet. Edmund Randolph, a second cousin of Jefferson, was attorney general and a friend of the Whiskey Rebellion leaders and in league with Gallatin and Genet. Randolph personally met with an agent of the French Jacobins in his home and asked for money to win over four men who were teetering in their support for the Jacobin cause. They were Thomas Mifflin, governor of Pennsylvania, Alexander da Dallas, secretary of state for Pennsylvania, and a leader of the Democratic societies, Jefferson and Randolph himself. Now Randolph became secretary of state after Jefferson left the cabinet. Randolph resigned once incriminating letters came into Washington's hands that showed Randolph was leaking private inner debates of the cabinet to a Jacobin agent, just as Jefferson had been doing, but had not been caught at the time. As reported in a London newspaper, one of the letters addressed to the French Committee of Public Safety, Fouché gives them information that the Secret Service money, which he carried with him to America, had been well employed in cementing stronger the bonds of amity between France and America and acknowledged himself much indebted to Mr. Randolph, the American Secretary of State, and to a gentleman of high office in the state of Pennsylvania. This appeared in the European Magazine and London Review in January 1796. It was Randolph who, at the opening of what became the Constitutional Convention, offered the Virginia plan to the assembled to write a new constitution. Rather than follow their instruction to amend the Articles of Confederation, the delegates decided to write an entirely new constitution. Now, in other words, the whole idea for having a runaway convention came out of the forces that were to ally themselves with the French Revolution. Some of the same people who proposed a new constitution were those who helped in the fight later to oppose the Constitution. We will continue to look at the American Jacobins next week.